Good evening. Thank you for being here. Uh, knowing that uh, this room is full of writers and producers uh, and looking around, uh, the first thought that occurs to me is, you clean up nicely. <laughs> Uh, I'm Marty Kaplan. I'm the director of the Norman Lear Center and a professor at the USC Annenberg School for Communication and Journalism. Uh, the Norman Lear Center, in case you don't know us, is a place where we try to understand the impact of entertainment on society and to shape the impact of entertainment on society. Uh, we look at things like what does it mean that uh, uh, politics and journalism have become branches of show business? Uh, what is the impact of the digital disruption on the business models of entertainment? What are the consequences to creative content of the digital era? What are the consequences to the creators of creative content or to the people formerly known as the audience? Uh, we look at the upsides and the downsides. We have on our website, uh, celebrating our 10th year, a, uh, uh, a page which says uh, 10 reasons why TV is good for you. So uh, if you ever are uh, despondent, please go a look and it'll, uh, have, it'll buck you up. Um, the uh, Lear Center is called the Norman Lear Center uh, for two reasons. Uh, one is that uh, Norman Lear's name is synonymous with the ability to have entertainment value, entertainment success, coupled with a concern for responsibility and ethics and an impact on society, which uh, was extraordinary when it burst onto the scene and remains ex uh, extraordinary today. And also because of his unbelievable generosity to the center, and uh, we wouldn't exist uh, had it not been for his generosity. I'm very proud to hold the Norman Lear chair at USC, and I could not be happier to be able to say in person how much I love and thank Norman Lear. Stand up. Have a look. So welcome to the 11th annual Sentinel for Health Awards. Tonight we have a chance to honor the writers and producers of some of the best shows on the air and to applaud their excellence in creating health-related storylines. These uh, awards are sponsored by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. The awards process is run by a program at the Norman Lear Center called Hollywood Health and Society, uh, which as many of you know is a free resource for writers and producers that connects them with some of the best experts in the country to answer their questions uh, about health. Um, as a Writers Guild member, I'm particularly uh, pleased that uh, ever since Hollywood Health and Society began, our board has been co-chaired by the president of the Writers Guild, whoever that has been at the time. Uh, so uh, we're uh, really uh, honored that uh, we connect through the generations, and uh, John Wells, uh, co-chair of our board, along with uh, Neil Baer, who is the executive director of uh, Law and Order SVU, and also, which some of you may know, a pediatrician. Um, we're going to move into the awards, and uh, just first to give you a little, little more context, I'd like to introduce to you someone that many of you know who is the director of our Hollywood Health and Society program, my colleague Sandra de Castro Buffington. Welcome, everyone. Thank you all for being with us tonight. Thank you, Marty. Script writers are the master storytellers of our time. They are creators of our collective future. Their stories transport millions of viewers around the world and invent what happens in our culture. The writers we're celebrating tonight have helped viewers take a leap on the path to health. Some consider this a leap on the path to conscious evolution. If we ask ourselves what is working in Hollywood, we will find the answer here tonight. We would not be able to offer these awards every year without the generous support of our funding agencies, so I'd like to start by recognizing our sponsors in the audience tonight. 
So please hold your applause to the end. From the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, Donna Garland, John Turner, Demetrius Parker, and Shane Joyner. From the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, Tom Scott. From the California Endowment, Mary Lou Fulton. And from the HRSA Division of Transplantation, Rita Maldonado. Would you all please stand so we can thank you. I'd also like to recognize the judges for these awards who gave their time to help choose the best of the best. Would you all please stand? And now I'd like to invite any subject matter experts to stand and be recognized for your contributions to assisting writers with their health storylines. And I'd like to thank the staff of the Norman Lear Center and Hollywood Health and Society for making this a fabulous evening and for all that you do. Back to you, Marty. So here's how tonight will go. We're going to present the Sentinel Awards, and immediately following that, we're going to have a brief panel uh, when some of the award recipients will talk about what it was like to make the entertainment that they're being honored for tonight. But don't worry, we will have you in bed by 5 to 10, okay? <laughs> uh, but first, there's a, a special award that uh, we're really honored to present tonight. It's named for uh, a man named Everett Rogers. He was a pioneer in the field of entertainment education as well as uh, a professor at the uh, Annenberg School. And uh, he died suddenly, and to honor him, uh, this award was created six years ago. This year's winner has come all the way from the Netherlands to be with us to accept the award. And by the way, it's the first time that the Rogers Award has gone to a woman, which we're delighted. Uh, here to present the award is the chair of the Rogers Award Selection Committee and a former dean of the USC Annenberg School who had the privilege to study and work with Ev Rogers, Peter Clark. Thank you, Marty. Indeed, it was a pleasure and honor and a source of great personal warmth and satisfaction to be a colleague of, of Ev Rogers, not only at the University of Southern California, but a number of years earlier at the University of Michigan. And I actually have known and had known Ev uh, since 1965. And there is no individual um, in uh, the panoply of people who have helped create the education entertainment movement um, who would be more appropriate to symbolize progress in this area. The, the judging committee this year uh, uh, moved with uh, uncommon speed and uh, unanimity in selecting Dr. Martine Boomen, uh, who is director of the Center for uh, Media and Health in the Netherlands. Uh, Martine has um, uh, really pioneered in a variety of dimensions of this field, uh, creating programming to be sure, uh, conducting research on the effectiveness of programming, and in particular formative research so that the programming is designed to be as powerful as it possibly can, uh, examining uh, the social impacts of education entertainment. But she's gone a, a, two steps further. She's combined those interests with being a tireless policy advocate uh, uh, with government and with corporations and in, in bringing them to the table to realize the power of entertainment for not only only amusing us, but subtly informing us. Uh, and also, she has done something that is really exceptional, which is to help create a curriculum that is now a standard feature of education, of, of advanced college education in the Netherlands, and is a model, really, for how this can be done worldwide to educate and to train the next generation of people who will create and examine the effects of education entertainment. So it gives me great pleasure and my colleagues on the judging panel to introduce to you and to confer the 2010 Rogers Award on Dr. Martine Booman. So, 
Martine, congratulations. Thank you very much. I had the pleasure to visit Martine in her beautiful hometown of Hauda in the Netherlands and then to present at her annual event, The Day of the Soap in Hilversum. So congratulations. Thank you very much. Okay. Well, it's a real pleasure to be here in Los Angeles. It's the first time I'm here in Los Angeles in the middle of uh, the, the industry where all those beautiful programs are made. And um, someone told me storytelling is in our DNA, and I think that's, that's true. And we all know the power of storytelling, and it's a pleasure to be here with all those people who are in this creative industry and who are willing to contribute to a better society and to add a value on entertainment education. So I would like to invite everybody of you to keep on doing your good work and to become a member of the entertainment, edu entertainment education community. Thank you very much. Now it's time to move on to the 2010 Sentinel for Health Awards. I love this event because it gives us a chance to honor TV writers who first and foremost tell great stories and connect powerfully with millions of viewers who come back week after week. But these viewers are not simply entertaining their, the viewers, they're also teaching them something important in the process. In fact, these shows can transform our society as a whole. And as many of you know, for a story to have that kind of impact, to get produced in the first place, it takes the alignment of many forces. But at the core, it always takes a deeply committed and visionary writer to bring it to life. Writers, tonight is all about you. It's our chance to honor your powerful storytelling and the positive and transformative effects your work has on society and on our health. Congratulations to all of you. Well, we received a total of 35 entries this year. They were all reviewed by health and entertainment experts who selected only nine of them as finalists. The finalists fall into the following five categories. <coughs> Children's programming, Spanish language telenovela, global health storyline, primetime minor storyline, and primetime drama. Let's begin with the awards for children's programming. There are two strong finalists in this category, both of which aired as primetime specials on PBS. The first is from Sesame Workshop and is called Families Stand Together. The storyline hosted by Al Roker, Deborah Roberts, and Elmo revolves around four families burdened with financial problems and finding ways to cope. Let's take a look. Oh, oh Nanny. Good morning. How's my little monster today? Oh, Elmo's great. Oh. <laughs> Wait, is it Saturday already? No, no, it's Tuesday, son. Oh. Why do you think it was Saturday? Because Mommy's home, and Mommy's always home on Saturday. <laughs> well, uh, that's true. Well, why isn't Mommy at work today? Well, darling, there's, there's something your Daddy and I want to talk to you about. C come on, on, sit over here, son. Okay. Sit down Okay, here. Daddy. <clears throat> right, now, you see, yesterday, I lost my job, and I'm not going to be working, at least for a little while. Oh, well, 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 so, so that means Mommy doesn't have to go to work? Mommy will be home? That's right. Oh, yay! <laughs> now Mommy can hang out with Elmo all day long. Yay! That's, that's right. <laughs> and I'm happy that I'm going to be spending more time with you and Daddy. Oh, good. <laughs> and, and I am too, but uh, uh, you see, son, uh, what this means is, is that we're going to have to make some changes in the way we live. Well, what kind of changes? Well, uh, I still have my job, mm -hmm. but without your mama working, we won't have as much money coming in. Uh-huh. So we'll have to...